Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well, I've been working on wooden spoons. I've never really done them before, but I decided to make some wooden spoons. As you know, I did a spatula a few weeks back there. They worked out, they were really easy to do. And I thought, well, you know, I'm going to try to make some more kitchen utensils. So I've been doing wooden spoons, long ones with turned handles, the flat handles. Uh, I made a special machine to scoop the bowl out, which works quite effectively. Some turned out like boat oars more than spoons, and some were flops that I was managed to salvage. And then there was a lot and a lot of bin material, ones that didn't turn out properly that had to end up in the bin. And then there was experimental uh, processes too. So I did a lot of that, and today I'm going to make another one, and I'm going to show you how I did that one, show you how I made the machine too. The router table will be used in it, the one that I showed you in the last video. So come along with me today and we'll show you how we got it done. So the first part of the process is I planed a, a board down to roughly two and a half inches wide or 65 millimeters wide by roughly half an inch thick or 12 and a half millimeters thick. I marked the center line down the middle all the way. I mark it clearly and then I square the ends too. Uh, with that center line down. If you are making one with a turned handle, you will need to make your stock thicker than mine. You may have to make it three quarter of an inch thick or 19 millimeters thick instead of half an inch thick. So as you can see, I'm marking down the end there. I square that around the end with the square. So this is the machine I made up. It's made out of an old angle grinder. It has a carving disc in it. This one's about 60 millimeters to 65 millimeters in diameter, roughly. And um, as you can see, as it rocks, that scoops out the bowl shape in the spoon. You'll see how it works. I'll take some close past footage of that. And the timber frame I have it in, it uh, winds up and down. See that little handle shape thing? This cranks up and down, which moves it that board up and down which slides the bolts that support the grinder up and down and raises and lowers the cutting disc. Here's some other views of the same machine. There's a centre line down the centre of that board there underneath. It rocks in a little simple cradle I made out of some old sea purloin and it's bolted to the front of the grinder down the front there and bolted to the sides and then slide grooves and the crank handle as I said some threaded rod these are the two discs I bought with that other disc came in a set of three uh, it's quite reasonably priced here we have the setup I line the centre line of my board up at the centre point underneath my bowl creator let's call it the bowl creator and um, once I've lined that up I line the center line up at the front and the center line up at the back then I lower the cutting disc and I start lowering it piece by piece and I basically go backwards and forwards like this and it cuts out the oval bowl I'll just speed this up now and it'll show you through the process so depending on what size spoon you want to make you could stop at any depth on the size spoon you want to make. The deeper you go, the wider the, uh, the size of the spoon and the longer the oval goes in the spoon too. All the time as I cut, I lower till I get to the desired depth I want. Once I've cut the bowl, I put some yellow masking tape over the hole like I have here. I press it down in and run my finger in the edge to crease it a bit. Then I run a pencil around which highlights where the bowl is. Now this will aid and assist me into cutting around the bowl equally and sanding around the bowl equally. So then I'll go on to marking out my handle. In this case I wanted my hand to taper. I want to narrow at the spoon end or the bowl end than at the other end, the handle end. 
So I mark it out and then I mark my taper. Here you'll see me using a roll of tape to mark that inside radius that goes from the hand, handle transition to the spoon or the bowl transition. The tape was the right size and it looked neat, so I used it to mark it out. Now that I've marked it out, it's off to the bandsaw to cut it in. I cut as close as I can to the handle lines, but I trim with excess around the, the bowl end. And then it's off to the sander. I did lose my bandsaw footage, I'm sorry about that, but it's as simple as trimming it out on the bandsaw. As you can see, I've trimmed it out to this shape. Now I sand it onto this sander. I take care to stay parallel with the circular oval line uh, that is around the bowl of the spoon head. I sand it as neat as I possibly can and as even as I possibly can around the total circumference up to the handle transitions on that bowl. This is where the um, yellow masking tape really helps out. So I can only really sand one side on the disc sander easily and um, there's a bit of gear in the road on the other side of this, this sander that I'm going to have to move. So I just sand as much as I can and then I take it over to the oscillating spindle sander and I finish the rest. What I found is it's so important to keep your lines parallel with that outer rim on the bowl. And then your transitions that I'm doing right now need to be equal. Otherwise, when you look down the handle of the spoon, you do notice it. I'm looking at it now to make sure it was right. And otherwise, it can look really odd. So it's important to do it as neat as you possibly can. Then it's just a matter of cleaning up the rest of the handle and uh, making it nice and neat and uniform and smooth and um, once I've done that it's on to the routing stage. Here's the quick easy light duty router table that we made in the last video but it's ideal for this sort of work. I've got a small round over bit in here I do a full round over on the bottom of the spoon that's the back side of the spoon not the bowl side as if you understand that's the side that you hold the most it's not the front side once I've uh, rounded over the back side I set the router bearing so it runs on a flat of the side and partially round over the top side if your stock was thicker you could do a full round over top and bottom or you could use a smaller round over bit and do a full round over top and bottom that way. So I'm about to do that round over on the top side now, but I'll put a mark across in the transition area here, and that's where I'll stop the round over. So I'll let the flights of the router bit come up to that point only and I'll transition it in, I'll cut it in nice and neatly with a carving knife. You'll see me stop at that point or start at that point now so we don't go past that point.
Now I'm belt sanding the back of the bowl and this tapers the bowl off in a nice uniform shape and it makes it a thinner appearance and a better shape for the spoon ultimately. Now we're up for sanding. I start off with about a 120 and I work down to probably a 240 in the finish. I just watch it by eye and um, just round over the corners as neat as possible. There's that transition at the back of the spoon head now. See how it tapers off to a thin point at the point of the bowl. And it came up, they come up really nice and quite practical too to use. So there's a little bit of sanding involved to get them nice and smooth and neat. But it is worth the effort. They don't take overly long to do. So there you have it, I've sanded it back, took about five minutes probably in sanding, and um, sorry about the footage there, but it come up uh, nice and neat, and they do, they come up quite effective. Just thought I'd show you using a spoon gouge, to do it by hand, it's very slow compared to the machine and not as neat either. Okay, thank you for joining me on the video today as I made this wooden spoon, I hope it was a clear enough video for you to understand. Um, the machine itself was quite simple to make. I've got three discs with that, as I mentioned in the video there. These are the other two discs I've got. One's more of a radius one, it's about 90 millimeters in diameter. The other is more of a flat profile. That one's about 60 millimeters in diameter. Um, I have seen fellas doing it with the chainsaw rim type of uh, carving disc too. Um, so you can use them too anyhow look I really appreciate you watching the video with me today if you liked it please like and subscribe um, could you share me with your friends that would be a great help maybe you've got a friend that does woodwork that would like to learn how to do wooden spoons and you could share that with them too alright I'll catch you on the next one